Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel and where we talk about all the tech things, testing and career growth. So if you are preparing for a QA automation interview, especially at Capgemini, then you are in the right place. Today, I am breaking down the most commonly asked interview questions, uh, sharing expert tips and even giving you, you know, uh, sample answers that will really help you to crack your next interview with confidence. So make sure you watch till the end uh, because I have a special bonus tip also that can give you an edge over the other candidates. Yeah, so let's dive it in. So what are the questions that were asked? Let's see. So the very first question that was asked is to write a program to find duplicate elements in a string array. What approach we can follow to solve this? Okay. This is the question. So uh, in this, we can have multiple approaches. Okay. So we can use the hash set approach. Okay. Uh, actually, it is a efficient approach. Uh, what we have to do in this, what we will do, we will traverse the array and store element in a hash set. Then what it will do, if an element is already present in the set, uh, it will duplicate it. Like it is a duplicate. Okay. Uh, here we are having this, this, this complexity. Uh, this is not that much important for us. Okay, and it is basically used for large data sets. Other approach that we can follow is using hash map. It will count the frequency basically using a hash map to uh, store the frequency of each element and element with a count greater than one are the duplicates. Uh, this is how we will get the duplicate elements. Okay, and same thing. The other approaches that we can follow for this are using nested loops. This is the best approach that I feel because it is not that much complex. We don't have to dive deep inside the, you know, uh, array and hash map and collection kind of thing. BSA. Okay. So this is the best approach that I feel for us. Uh, then we have to compare each element with every other element. So uh, at the end, we will be able to fetch the duplicate elements here. Uh, it is not that much efficient for large data sets. This is the thing. Okay. Other than that, uh, we can use shorting method also. Uh, we will short the array and check consecutive elements for duplicates. Okay, like this, we will be able to pass the duplicate elements. Uh, yeah, uh, it is useful only if the shorting is acceptable. So these are the approaches that we can follow to get the duplicate elements. So this was the first question. Let's move forward for the second question. What it is? So this is like, how would you introduce yourself briefly and effectively? So um, first of all, uh, how we have to introduce ourselves. Uh, start with your name and experience. Let's suppose uh, I am Abra Kadabra, an automation test engineer with this much year of experience. Then I have to mention my skills, whatever expertise I have, I have to put it here. Okay. Then I have to talk about my current role. What are the current role and responsibility that I am having? So this you have to mention. Then at the end, we have to mention some key achievements or the career goals. Okay. So this is the thing. This is very common thing. You people can, you know, prepare very well. So I won't discuss much on this. Let's move to the another question. So this is the third question. Explain the framework you have worked with in your automation testing process. Okay. So in this, whatever the automation framework that you are using in your current, uh, you know, organization in your current team, you have to explain that thing. Okay. So, uh, like there are various kind of frameworks that we have like hybrid data driven, keyword driven, BDD, Cucumber, et cetera, et cetera. Components, POM, TestNG, JUnit or CICD, Jenkins, every, anything you whatever you were using okay you have to explain so uh, let's suppose if you are following a POM okay page object model so uh, like you can mention this thing we use page object model to improve code reusability and maintainability then test data is managed separately using the excel file or the json files then we have a custom logger and reporting mechanisms. Uh, then we have integrated Allure reports for better test results. Like this, you are you have to explain this uh, framework. Like I am explaining, uh, taking playwright in my mind. Okay. Then if I talk about the execution part, we are using CI/CD integrations like uh, our playwright test runner uh, that run parallel test cases for faster uh, cycles. And then we are having GitHub uh, and Azure also. Uh, and we have this CI CD pipelines in which uh, we run the seamless automation. Okay. So like this, we can explain the framework. Okay. 
this is the thing you have to explain it in more you know a uh, more detailed way i have just given an overview like how you can explain you can even explain the folder structures that you are having in your framework how the things you are managing etc etc but these are the things that i have written like if you are using selenium you have to mention these things how these things are working like this you can uh, go with the uh, this question okay guys uh, let's move to the next question how do you handle closing the second window of a browser in automation testing okay so this is the question which is asked uh, like many of time uh, this question get asked so how we will handle this situation okay so first of all uh, this is the syntax uh, that i have uh, written for you guys uh, what we have to do uh, we will use this for loop uh, in which we have given string window driver that uh, dot get window handles we will use then with using a get window handles uh, we are what we are doing we are uh, writing this thing driver dot switch to dot window and we are passing this window here okay and if driver dot get title dot equals main window title like it's not we have written then driver dot close so it will close the uh, close the second window basically so this is how we can uh, get it uh, so uh, this is the thing like store the uh, main window handle trigger an action that will open the second window and then we can do get all window handles like using that get window handle then we will loop it uh, through uh, like we will uh, loop them and switch to the second window then we will use driver dot close uh, to close the second window like this uh, we will switch back to our main window this is the uh, you know flow that you can explain to your interviewer also because if they don't ask to write a program then this way you have to explain the thing like how this mechanism will work okay let's move forward for the next question differentiate between x path and css selector okay so this is a question which is asked many a time so how you will answer it uh, to you know prove yourself different from other candidates so i will tell you how because everyone know the answer of this question because this is a very basic question so to stand out among the you know uh, candidates uh, what you can uh, say first of all xpath and css selector both are used to look at elements in a web page but their efficiency and flexibility differ significantly okay when you add this line while giving your answer it will keep an edge like it will you know uh, stand out it will make you stand out from the other candidates okay so after saying this line you have to give exact answer that is the like this uh if i talk about the syntax let's suppose this is how you have to start if i talk about the syntax of xpath and css selector the xpath syntax are usually complex but if i talk about the css selector the syntax are quite simpler okay like this you have to say after that if if like this if i talk about the performance the xpath is quite slower but in the same uh, time css selectors are much faster than xpaths so this is the second uh, second difference that you have told traversing dom okay this is the important point that you have to mention in your answer okay we can move backward as well as forward in xpath okay but if i say about css selector it only moves in one direction that is forward direction so like this you have to give the answers to the interviewer okay then let's move to the next question what is the syntax for a link text xpath locator okay so here the interviewer has uh, interviewer has asked only to tell the syntax or to write the syntax so this thing you can tell him driver dot find element by dot link text okay this is the thing that you have to remember then whatever the thing is there this is the link text and that dot click method okay like this you can uh, proceed with your answers let's suppose like seventh question what changes or setups do you perform before starting execution in your framework so uh, this is the thing that i have give you like just points what we do we clear logs and reports set up test data 
check configurations like browser, environment, URL, ensure test scripts are updated. So these kind of answer you can give to your interviewer and you can briefly explain these things also like how you people are doing and how you are achieving this thing. Okay. Let's move forward to the next question. How do you handle change requests in your application? Okay, so in these kind of questions, just don't get into rush. Just take a time and think like what is the best answer that you can deliver? Okay, so look, what is the answer that you can deliver? I have prepared a dummy answer for you so you can take reference from this also. First of all, analyze the impact of changes. Then update automation scripts accordingly. Review and validate changes before merging execute regression tests. So these are the four points that you can explain him properly. These are the you know exact points. You have to explain these four points in a brief manner. Okay, so like this you can explain. How often do you trigger regression test scripts? How do you manage them in your repository? So for these kind of questions, uh, you can answer like this triggered on every major code change or weekly, whatever your organization is doing as per that you can answer. Or uh, then for the second question, how we manage our repository. So basically we are managing our repository using GitHub or GitLab branches right? like this. You can answer. OK. Next question, what challenges have you encountered in automation testing and how did you overcome them? OK, this is one of the most favorite question of the interviewers. Yes, you heard it right. Because many of the interviewers do this question and everyone gives it the answer. De deta hai. So that thing you don't have to do. OK, you have to, you know, give a you know, wider range of answer like this. Dynamic elements. This is the most common answer given by every candidate. OK, so you have to mention this thing, but in, uh, like additionally, you have to add something. So stand out in the crowd. OK, so first thing dynamic elements. OK, so this we can handle using explicit weights or XPath functions. OK, test failures. What we can do when tests are failing at that time, we can use read by mechanisms. API response issue. What we can do, we can use postman and assertions. So these are the things the challenges that you have faced and these are the solution that you have overcome. Most of the time what people do, they just, uh, you know, revolve around this dynamic element and end their answer. No, you have to mention API testing as well, test failures as well. And apart from that, you can also if you are having some knowledge about, uh, you know, performance testing. So uh, from there also you can give something like uh, in that what you do. OK, so these are the things that you can mention in this answer. It will keep you, you know, uh, top of the other candidates. OK, the most favorite question of the interviewer difference between a get and a post method in API testing. OK, so everyone know the difference between this, these two. OK, so uh, like to answer it in a proper way so that you can stand out from the crowd. You have to be unique. You have to be, you know, more, you know, answerable to the question. So this is how you have to uh, give the answer. Uh, let's see get and post method. OK, get and post method are two of the most commonly used HTTP method request. OK, uh, in API testing. Uh, so like this, you have to mention something about the you know background set. Karna hai sabse thoda sa. Ye kar diya humne. Then uh, basically get method is used to retrieve the data from the server without modifying it. But if I talk about the post request, it is used to send data to the server to create or update a resource. So this is the thing. OK, then we have catching. Yeah, in get. Yes, in post. No, if I talk about secure. Yeah, get is less secure and more is oh, sorry. Post is more secure. So like this, you can answer it. If you want to give some syntax kind of thing or something, you can mention that thing also. OK, and finally, like as a final verdict, you can say. We use get for fetching data efficiently and we use post for sending or modifying data securely. This ending will give a good impact on the interview. OK, like this, you can answer this question. OK, let's move forward. 
what are the essential components of get and post methods okay so these things uh, you should know uh, like in get we have url headers query params and in post we have url headers body body can mean any form json xml html etc etc you can mention this thing okay raw whatever you want discuss this http status codes like 401 and 503 okay so uh, in this uh, just a straight answer like uh, what is 401 what is 503 okay uh, if i say everyone know who is doing api testing what is 401 what is 503 okay just if you give an answer 401 unauthorized 403 service unavailable error so it won't create a good impact right better you will answer it like uh, like 401 that is unauthorized invalid token okay the request required authentication but the client has not provided valid credential or has provided incorrect credentials so at that time we generally encountered 401 error okay if i talk about the 503 that is service unavailable or server overloading so it will be like the server is temporarily unavailable this can be due to overload or maintenance or other issue affecting the server's ability to respond so like this, you will answer this question now. It will really give a good image to the interviewer. Okay. How do you validate the response code in API testing? So in this, you have to, uh, you know, uh, write this thing, uh, whatever the code we are using to assert that thing. Okay. What format do you use for assertion in your tests? So this uh you know syntax you can uh, remember and you can give assert sorry assert dot assert equals actual message uh, like actual expectation and validation message like this again explain the difference between 200 and 201 http status code so uh, same as previously i have uh, mentioned the thing you can give the answer accordingly okay and here i can uh, i will just uh, give you a short d uh, answer 200 is for okay success data retrieved 201 is created resource successfully created so this is how you can answer this thing provide the syntax for query parameters in api request so like this response res given dot query params then you will provide id then one two three and that get users okay like this this is the syntax you should remember and you can write when they will ask okay so these are the questions that were asked in Capgemini uh, for a QA interview. And I hope you people enjoyed this video. And if you have, uh, you know, get something knowledgeable from this, just share it with your friends and subscribe my channel. Also hit the bell icon so you don't miss an uh, update from me. And yeah, keep learning guys. Till then, bye-bye. Hope to see you soon in the next video. Yeah, bye.